Good afternoon. My name is Debbie Butler, and my local challenge is acquiring an AFI's AIM number. Next slide. So I thought I would provide you some definitions. AFI's is Army and Air Force Exchange Services. NAV is non-appropriated funds. AIM is automatic inventory management. And RAA is Regional Application Administrator. Next slide. My problem is that AFIS is not providing the AIMS number to us within 48 hours as requested. And this creates a negative and with the buyer and with the end user and receiving the merchandise. Next slide. A little bit of the background. In 2010, AFIS Command and our non-appropriated fund command joined into a partnership to save money for both of us on shipping. The stakeholders in this are the command groups, the buyers, and the end users. AFIS has a logistics section that, ha that includes one transportation center, four distribution centers, and seven commercial consolidation centers. <clears throat> when you request a shipping quote, when we started this, we originally requested a shipping quote for over 75 pounds. Now, this year, we are currently over 200 pounds. 75 pounds was a little too much for us to request. <clears throat> Therefore, once we get the shipping information back and the quote back, we are to process the AIMS number application. This AIMS application number <clears throat> will actually provide a location-specific number that we actually put on our contract. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the AIMS number alternatives. I have three alternatives. One is the RAA will complete the AIMS application. The second one is extend the current hour hours from 48 to 72. And the third is to complete a self-diagnostic fillable form. Next slide. For the RAAs and AIM numbers, the RAAs would complete the AIM application. They would be the only one completing that application. The facilities would have the correct shipping address whereas right now each buyer inputs a shipping address and they may input it in differently each time. So there are different AIMS numbers for the same location. If the RAs input these in, then the AIMS number would be populated into the procurement system by the RAAs. The errors would be reduced drastically. The award would be completed faster. However, in our instance as the Southeast region, we have 17 installations under our command. And of those 17, each of the installations could have upward of 100 activities under them. So you're looking at over 2,000 entries that could be posted into the system by one person. This is very labor intensive with the workload that they already have. Next slide, please. And the next alternative is the timeline extension. The timeline could be extended from 48 72 hours. However, AFIS cannot meet the 48 hours now, so that would be a major concern. The extension would create a longer wait time to complete the awards. There would be more unhappy customers, and the receipt of the product would take even longer. The process from AFIS must be streamlined, and right now I don't see that that would happen with the timeline extension. The self-diagnostic form. <clears throat> this is a form that is completed online. The bank would assign AIMS numbers to each of the regions separately. When the buyer filled out and completed the application form, there would be an immediate response if the form was not correct. Prior to, if someone completes um, the application form and it's not correct, it goes to a different person which in turn could take two or three extra days to get back to the buyer to let them know that it's not complete. So with this process, there would be an immediate response if it was not done correctly. <clears throat> Once it was done correctly, the AIM number would be emailed directly to the buyer within minutes. AFIS and NAF would need to integrate their computer system, and the onus of all this work would fall on the buyer, not on AFIS. The awards would be completed in a timely manner, and this would be an overall positive impact. Next slide. The rankings of the three alternatives, the RAAs rank 
11, extended hours rank 12, the self-fill form ranked 16. My scale was one to five, five being the best. So as you can see, the self-diagnostic fill form rates the highest and the best use of the three. Next slide, please. So therefore, the takeaways on the RAAs, there is one correct address per location. The AIMS number is located in, loaded into the system actually by the RAA. There would be a quick award when the buyer goes in to do their award, the number's already there. However, the RAAs will do extra work and it is time consuming. Next slide, please. The takeaways on the extended hours. Heuristically speaking, these hours will never be extended. So therefore, the process becomes more convoluted and the customer is more dissatisfied. But APs and NAV must streamline their process in order for this to work, for the 48 hours to work. But overall, this alternative is a negative impact. Next slide, please. The takeaways on the self-diagnostic form. The diagnostic form is easy to use. A set of numbers are already pre-assigned and loaded for each region. The number is only requested if AFIS will be used as the shipper. The buyer receives the number just within minutes, and the end user receives the merchandise in a timely manner. Next slide, please. So my recommendation is to use the self-diagnostic form, and these are my timelines. AFIS and NAV computers will be integrated by 1 July 2011. The AIMS numbers will be located, loaded I'm sorry, into the database by 1 August 2011. The month of September would be the training and trial time. And full implementation will be 1 October of 2011. Next slide. In summary, this partnership between AFIS and the non-appropriated funds provides additional funds for morale improvements for all of our NAF locations and our installations. This partnership also will keep costs lowered at AFIS all around the world, which in turn helps the soldiers and their families for a lower cost. And this partnership is a win-win. Thank you very much.